Hello and welcome to another Autodesk Alias subdivision tutorial. My name is Johan Wendersten and today I will show you how to model this Playsome toy rocket. So without further ado, let's get started. And the first thing I want to do is to import the reference image into Alias. So I go to the left view and then I choose File, Import and Canvas Image. And I make sure that Always Create New Canvas is enabled. Then I click Go and I choose the image that I want. And I would also like it to be a bit transparent. So I set the transparency to 0.5 ish. And by the way, I made this image available to you through a link in the description, but you might as well just Google for place and rocket and you will find it. Now I want this to be the proper scale. And that begs the question, how big is a rocket like this in real life? I made some research. Well, I just Googled and what I found was that it's actually 17 centimeters tall. So I want to create a distance locator with that exact same height and then match the canvas image to that distance locator. So I place the start point at the origin and then I press tab to shift focus to the command input where I type 0, 0 and 170 and this creates the distance locator. If you are new to alias and you're unfamiliar with those, they can be found under locators and measure. And now it's just a matter of scaling and moving the canvas image until we are matching. And this will be a while, so bear with me. Okay, almost there. And I need to raise it up slightly. And scale it some more. That's about right, I think. And I also need to make sure that it's centered. So I snap it to the center of the grid. I move it rearward slightly so it's out of the way when it comes time to start modeling. And why not create a new layer and name it reference image. And I will assign the canvas image to that layer and make it a proper reference layer. And then I might as well just get rid of the locator since I don't need it anymore. Now, if you're using alias 2021 like I am, then you would be wise to go to the preferences menu and choose workflows and switch to the subdiv workflow. This changes the UI so you get access to the subdiv shelf as well as the hotkeys and marking menus. And the left mouse button marking menu is the selection marking menu. The middle mouse button marking menu is the transformation marking menu. And the right mouse button marking menu is a miscellaneous marking menu. And it contains a little bit of everything. Okay, so enough with the preparations. Now it's finally time to begin modeling. I am by no means a rocket anatomy expert. Why I will be referring to the black main volume of the rocket as a rocket body and the smaller red pieces as the rocket legs. And when it comes to the modeling of this, I will start out with the rocket body. I create a subdivision cylinder at the center of the grid. And as you can see, the cylinder has holes running through it, which we need to fill. So I pick edge loop to get all the edges surrounding the border. Then I click fill hole, and I make sure that single face is enabled. And I fill the bottom hole as well. This gives us somewhat of a ball shape which is to be expected when working with subdivision models, since everything tends to get smoothed out and rounded off. And it's really not a problem, we will easily be able to sculpt this into more of a rocket shape later. What is a problem, however, is this weird topology that we get over here, and it's because of the top face. So if I go into box mode, you will see that it indeed has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 corners. It's an octagon, and we generally want to work with four-sided faces. So I will use the cut tool to split this into smaller segments. I cut from one side to the other, and then I cut perpendicular to that. And I will repeat the action for the bottom as well. And you will see that this cleans up our topology. A pro tip is to hold control while cutting between points, because it makes sure that you're actually snapping directly onto the points. Whenever you perform the cut like this, it can be a good idea to double check the geometry. And here you can see that my center vertices are actually a bit off center. So I press the R key on my keyboard to enter the scale tool and then I scale them to align them. Then I press the W key and I hold control to snap them. And now everything is centered and aligned. Then I select all the vertices and I move the whole model upwards. And I once again enter the scale tool and I use the white square to scale it proportionally so it doesn't get skewed. Then I move the top row vertices upwards and the bottom row downwards until we are matching the reference. 
So this is about how close we get with the limited amount of geometry that we have at our disposal. And in order to turn this into more of a rocket shape, we need to insert a few extra edge loops. And for that we'll use the insert edge loop tool. So I click an edge and I drag to the side where I want to place it. And if I set this to relative, I can use the slider to insert an edge loop exactly in the center. And I can just middle mouse button click to insert edge loops with the last used settings. Then it's just a matter of selecting rows of vertices and scaling them until our rocket is matching the rocket in the image reference. So that's all there is to it really. And if you compare our rocket to the original, you can see that ours is a little flat at the top. So I want to address this by selecting the top center vertex and raising it. And then I think I need to move everything down slightly. And I need to scale that row a little bit and raise it up. So I think that somewhere along those lines should be fine. You will also notice that our rocket is way too round at the bottom. And the way subdivision models work is that whenever you want to create a small radius or a crease line, you need edges with little to no spacing in between them. So for this, I will insert an edge loop really close to the bottom edge, which I then can slide up and down to control the size of the radius. Inserting extra edge loops tend to alter the shape. So whenever you do that, it's a good idea to go in afterwards and make modifications to make sure that you're still matching with the reference. So in this case, I'm scaling and moving the bottom most rows of vertices, as well as this one. And as far as the rocket body goes, I think that we are finished with it. So let's make it a template and move on to the legs. Before I start modeling the leg, let me tell you a little bit about my strategy for creating it. So. Generally, when you're working with polygon models or subdivision models, it can be quite tricky to make pieces actually fit together. And usually you kind of have to fake it. But since we're working in alias and we have all these nice surfacing tools at our disposal, I think that we should make use of them. Why I will be utilizing a hybrid modeling technique where I will make the leg a little bit oversized so it's sticking into the body. And then I will intersect it with the body and trim away all the unnecessary meat, if you will. And lastly, apply a fillet to make a really nice join and a flush collision between the two parts. This time I will start out with a subdivision plane, which I place arbitrarily. And then I proceed to move the corner vertices into the desired locations. And now I need some more geometry to work with. So I use the insert edge loop tool to insert a few extra edge loops. And I think a three will be fine for this. Then it's just a matter of selecting and moving vertices to make our model match the reference image as closely as possible. A general rule of thumb is that you want evenly spaced edges to create nice smooth surfaces and the opposite goes for creases and corners. And that's why you see me putting edges so close together down at the very bottom of the leg because there I want a small radius. I hope I'm not boring you too much with this. I'm almost done, I promise. Just a little more. I don't need to get it perfect, but I want it to be good enough. And I think that is good enough for now. So if you look at the leg, you can see that it actually has really sharp corners, but those will go away as soon as I use the extrude tool and I add some thickness to the model. You see how smooth and round it became? And this is what we want for the bottom, but not for the top. So what I will have to do is to select the top face of this one. And then I simply have to delete it. And you see what happens. We now get a very nice clean cut, just like we want to. Then let me create a new layer and name it leg. And let me assign the leg to that layer and apply symmetry to the layer. Because now I want to create the taper effect. So I want the leg to be thinner at the bottom and thicker at the top. And 
For that, I will select all the vertices at the side, and then I will use the Align to Surface tool. And I set it to degree 1 because I want a flat surface, and I want to project the vertices in the Y direction. And then I press Generate Surface to create the surface. And now we can use the surface to modify the vertices. So if you see, when I'm tilting it, the vertices are glued on top of it. And this is a really neat and controlled way of modifying a surface, which I use all the time. So thank you so much Autodesk for adding this, I love it. Then, whenever I'm happy with the changes I made, I can just select the geometry and delete history to make them permanent. Furthermore, our leg is a bit too blocky, so we need to round it off somehow. I pick edge loop, and then I select these two edge loops. And I will use the bevel tool. I set the mode to relative, and then I can use the slider to adjust the size of the bevel. Or I can simply just drag with my left mouse button. But for now I want a parameter value of 0.5, then I press spacebar to complete the bevel. And as you can see this created a crease line along the side of our leg, and this is to be expected since we have two edges lying exactly on top of each other. It's not a problem though since we can fix this by using the weld tool. So I set the tolerance to something small, and then I just drag select on top of the vertices which I want to weld. And you can see that the crease goes away one vertex pair at a time until we have a nice smooth surface. To make this flat spot go away, I first need to create actual geometry from the symmetry layer. So I go to Layers, Symmetry, and Create Geometry. And this gives us two objects, which we can then merge into one by using the Well tool. So once again, I set it to, to Tolerance, and I use the same Tolerance as previously, and I just drag Select, and you will see what happens. Now it's one object all of a sudden. It's still flat looking though, and in order to remedy that, I need to select this edge loop, which is running all across the symmetry line. And then I simply have to delete it, and now it looks the way we want it to. Let me show you something curious, because if I use Pick Template and then I drag select across the leg, you will see that I get these extra template surfaces. And I've noticed that every time I create geometry from a symmetry layer and then weld that geometry with another piece of geometry, I get these extra template surfaces. And the way I like to look at them is that they're ghost surfaces from past models uh, that refuse to let go and instead have come back to haunt the scene. And if we don't want them to linger in our model, we need to help them into the afterlife by simply deleting them. So that's what I'm doing here. And now I can move on. And hopefully can go surfaces as well. So time for some final touches. I will just make sure that everything looks the way it's supposed to. And if you look at the very tip of the leg, you can see that we have something strange going on down there. And it's because that face is actually six-sided. So I will just do like we did before and use the cut tool to cut across to instead make two quads, which fixes the problem. And then I can just take these two points and move them down slightly to round off the tip of the leg. With that, we've reached the final stage of the modeling process, the hybrid modeling phase. And normally I could just use these subdivision bodies as they are and continue to work with them. But since I want multiple copies of the leg, I therefore need to duplicate it and I've noticed in the past that whenever I duplicate a trimmed subdivision object, I get unexpected results. Let's put it that way. So to make sure that everything runs smoothly, I first want to create surface duplicates from my subdivision objects. I select both objects, then I click the surface from subdiv button and I make sure that keep originals is enabled. Then I click go and although it seems like nothing happened, this actually created surface duplicates from our subdivision geometry. I use pick subdiv to select my subdivision objects. And then I create a new layer, which I name subdiv original. And then I assign my objects to that layer in case I need them later on. And now what you see on the screen are merely NURBS objects or Bezier objects rather. Since part of the body is going to be used to form the end of the leg, I need to make a copy of it. I then hide that copy. 
And now I can just select the leg and use the intersect tool and intersect it with the body. After that, I can easily trim away everything that I don't need. I then proceed to delete all the unnecessary surface patches from the rocket body. Then I will once again make use of the trim tool. And those two I don't need either, so I can easily just delete them. And now the only thing that remains is to apply a fillet to the edge, which I'm doing here. And for this I will go with a simple G2 cord fillet. And let's set the cord length to 2.5. That's more like it. I select all the surface patches and I add them to a new layer. I also make sure to group them because this will simplify the duplicating process later on. I select the leg group and I make sure that the pivot is at the origin. Then I go to edit, duplicate and object. I want two copies and I want to rotate them 120 degrees in the Z axis. Then I press go and this gives me the remainder of the legs. And with that our Play Some Toy Rocket is finished. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.